This is what we're going to look at during this demonstration. Okay. First of all, a little bit of positioning, uh, typical server uses, uh, and a little bit of a look at the uh, server firmware, which is a vital component of actually creating the domains and managing the system as a whole. The firmware being uh, the piece of software that is installed in the factory and sits between the hardware and the operating system. Um, the open boot prom, for example, and the post uh, power and self-test software. And you'll see how that works very shortly. Then we'll quickly move on and look at the interesting aspects, the practical demonstration of um, how you go about configuring a T-Series server, um, installing Solaris, although it does come pre-installed, installing and obtaining the logical domain software, which is, as Dave mentioned, uh, now known as Oracle VM server for Spark. The types of logical domain that can be created, uh, creating something called the control domain, which if you like is the controlling um, operating system from which you uh, create and maintain the other uh, domains, which are typically known as guest domains. And it's within the guest domains that you um, create and run your applications. We've pitched this webinar uh, uh, assuming that most of you will have had some uh, Solaris admin experience. So I'm going to mention things like you know install Solaris but without actually explaining uh, too much about how to do it and assume that you would have the skills you know from the past to understand what I'm saying. Of course there will be times when you can pitch in with some questions, please do so at the appropriate times. Um, as Dave mentioned also, skill builders have been uh, involved for quite some time now in um, installing, or selling, installing, configuring, uh, maintaining T-series servers uh, with some fairly complex uh, configurations, one of which I'll show you shortly to give you an idea of the, the level of complexity that you can reach. So it's a virtual virtualization facility that allows you to uh, divide hardware resources and run each system as uh, a truly independent operating system. So it's not like zones or containers. It's not a software feature. It relies on the firmware to create the logical divisions and you use the logical domain manager software to instruct the firmware um, basically as, as to how to divide up that hardware resource. It also has some fairly amazing facilities uh, like being able to dynamically change the resources. Okay? Uh, and in the latest version you can dynamically uh, change even the memory allocation of the system while the host is running. Not to mention uh, assigning more CPUs if you think that's necessary without having to do any reboots. Okay, so it's, uh, it's quite an amazing technology. So it sits somewhere between a software technology like um, uh, Solaris containers or zones and uh, something like the slightly older Sunfire dynamic domains that you may have come across in the past. Okay. Now you can run Solaris on a logical domain, of course. Uh, that's the 1106 release onwards. And you can also run uh, Linux and OpenBSD systems. And there's a couple of links there in the notes for, for downloads if you're interested. Obviously, the range of applications uh, that you'd be running under Linux being Spark version would be slightly less than you would normally expect on, a, on perhaps an Intel box. But no, nonetheless, you can run uh, a Linux version. If you have any legacy uh, Solaris 8 or 9 systems, you cannot run them directly in a logical domain because they do not support the Sun 4V architecture. But you can create zones, i.e. containers, inside a logical domain and then you can run your Solaris 8 and 9 legacy systems within that. And of course with containers you have resource controls so you can assign a number of the CPUs of the system, an amount of memory 
and so forth. So you can do some really good consolidations of an existing Solaris setup within your logical domains machine. And the machines have been referred to as a data center in a box. So take all your servers, put them into a T3 or T4, uh, and you, then you've only got one physical system to, to worry about. Yeah. Some of the uses are fairly obvious. Um, Oracle recommend small to medium sized applications and databases. But things like web, financials, name services, uh, departmental databases are good candidates. Um, development and testing environments. Remember that because you have physically separate systems with physically separate operating systems, you can patch them to different levels, which is very difficult or nigh on impossible with a Solaris zone stroke container. And of course you have less physical hardware, so um, restricting physical access can often be uh, much more simple with something like one of these servers. Okay. Now the system firmware is a highly important part of a system like this and is called an ILOM, Integrated Lights Out Manager. And that maintains the components that you'd normally be familiar with on the Spark system, like the power and self-test facilities and the open boot prompt. Okay. Uh, but basically what you do, you install Solaris on your T-Series server and then you add the logical domains manager and using commands within that, you then establish the actual domains that are divided into the firmware. Okay. Uh, there are certain issues about versions of the Oracle VM server software and its compatibility with the current version of the firmware. But when you download the software and you look at the associated readme files, it will quite clearly explain the patch levels that you need and also the firmware revisions. Okay. Now you can access the firmware uh, initially usually through a serial port and I won't go into too many details about how to do that. I'm, I'm sure some of you will already be familiar with that. And of course, uh, once you've accessed that, you can then set up a network connection and usually access through something like SSH, okay. which is exactly what I've done here. Okay. Uh, and this machine has uh, got the operating system installed on it already. There you can see the description. So I've installed my T5120 just like any other um, star system so there's no dom domains on there at the moment the operating system version is uh, as you can see update 9 I don't know if you're aware but update 10 has just been released also uh, in this particular case, I haven't installed any patches or made any changes. It's just a straightforward install. Uh, the firmware side of things, um, it normally has DHCP enabled by default. So if you connect your system and t switch it on while it's connected to uh, your network, it may pick up an address, although it can be set statically. Uh, the login d defaults are root and the password is change me, just in case you ever get stuck. There's a handy bit of information for you. 